So the question is, um, do the points 9, 12, and 6, 8 form a direct variation? So what I'm asking is, do 9 and 12 and 6 and 8 form something that's directly proportional? Or are x and y directly proportional to each other? And it's really quite easy to check because what I need to find for a direct variation is um, that the quantity y over x is going to be constant for every single data point. Um, so what I'm looking for is 12 over 9 equal to 8 over 6. And that's a proportion um, made up of these two points. 12, 9 is made up from the 9, 12, and the 8 over 6 is, is made up from the 6, 8. I made a y over x. And so if something is directly proportional, I can set up these kinds of ratios, and they're all going to be equal to each other if the relationship is indeed directly proportional. So I just have to check to make sure that 12 over 9 equals 8 over 6, and 12 over 9 is the same thing as uh, 4 thirds, and 8 over 6 is the same thing as 4 thirds. So that means that 9, 12, and 6, 8 are indeed uh, directly proportional, and they do vary with each other directly, so they are a part of a direct variation. Now to figure out specifically what direct variation they're a part of, I can remember how the equations are written. When the equation for a direct variation is going to be y equals this number, this 4 thirds, times x. Uh, because this 4 thirds is the constant of variation, and if I look at every single point that falls on the line y equals 4 thirds x, I can set up the ratio of y over x to y over x, and it's always going to equal 4 thirds. So that's why we call this thing a constant. Do the points 1, 5, and 2, 9 form a directly proportional relationship? So remember, I'm checking to see if y over x is a constant. And so if, they, if it is a directly proportional relationship, if there is a direct variation between the x and the y, then I should be able to put the y over the x, and it's going to equal this y over this x. And as far as I can tell, 5 is not the same thing as 9 over 2. This is equal to 5, and that's 4.5. And this is obviously not equal. So these two points are not directly proportional, and so they are not a part of a direct variation. So I'm looking for where the y over x is constant for it to be a direct variation or a directly proportional relationship. To answer a question like this where it says I'm given that y varies directly as x and I want to find x, what this means here is that I have been given something that is a direct variation. That means the points 9, 12, and x comma negative 16 belong to the exact same directly proportional relationship, which means graphically they're on the same line that goes through the origin. So in order to find x, I need to remember that varies directly means exactly the same thing as directly proportional, and that y over x is constant in these directly proportional relationships. And this tells me exactly how I'm going to find out what x is. So I'm going to say 12 over 9 is equal to negative 16 over x. y over x has to equal y over x. So this gives me a proportion to solve. And so if I remember how to solve these proportions, I need to first invert this by reciprocalizing both sides to get the x in the numerator and then multiply both sides by this negative 16. And I do this calculation. 9 divided by 12 times negative 16 gives me negative 12. Therefore, x equals negative 12. So the value of x in this situation is negative 12. I need to be able to determine if a table of data represents a direct variation. Or I'm asking, does a table show a directly proportional relationship between x and y? And so in order to do this, I need to remember that in a direct variation or a directly proportional relationship, y over x is going to be constant. And so that gives me the way to test if these tables do indeed represent 
a direct variation. Now you're going to notice that the tables from now on are no longer going to be sequential like they were for the sequences unit. I'm going to have things jump around. So luckily I have a test. Y over X is constant for something that's directly proportional. So for this table I'm going to take the Y value and divide it by the X value for each of the four points. Now if this is indeed a directly proportional relationship or a direct variation, I can put equal signs in between those three ratios and they are going to be true in that they are indeed equal. So if I take 26 and I divide it by 2, I get 13. If I take 52 and I divide it by 4, I get 13. And if I take 91 and I divide it by 7, I also get 13. That means that this table is indeed directly uh, proportional, or the y values are directly proportional to the x values, so this is a yes, it is a direct variation. Now once I know this number here, what the y over x is equal to, I also know the equation. So the equation that generates this table is y equals 13x. So I know these two pieces of information from just this one test. Now if I check these points out, if I take 5 over 2, 9 over 4, and 15 over 7, and I check these ratios, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, 9 divided by 4 is 2.25, and there's really no point in me checking this last point because these two are not equal. Therefore, y and x are not directly proportional to each other, and so this is no, not a direct variation. Now, I can't find the equation yet. I have to figure out some other way to find the equation of this one. All I know right now is that this is not a direct variation because y over x is not constant. So I have to remember that direct variations, their equations are always of the form y equals some constant times x. So that's the first thing I look for. I look for an equation of this form. Notice there's no addition or subtraction. It's just some constant times an x. Um, and so if I look at this one, this is indeed in the form y equals 3 times x or y equals k times x. So this is, yes, a direct variation. And I also know the constant of variation here. It's a 3. This one is also a direct variation. It is of the form y equals some constant times x. Um, and the constant in this case is negative 1 fourth. If I look at this example, this is also a yes because it's some constant times x. The constant just happens to be 1 ten thousandth. Um, and so let's look at this example here. This example is not in the right form. It's 5y equals 2x. So then the question becomes, can I use my properties of equality to make it look like something in the form y equals k times x? So what's preventing this from being in the correct format is the 5y. So if I divide both sides by 5, I get y equals 2x over 5. And my question is, is that a direct variation, meaning is that in the form y equals k times x? And it actually is, because I can rewrite this 2x over 5 as 2 fifths times x. So this original example of 5y equals 2x is indeed a direct variation, because I can convert it to make it look like y equals k times x. And so now I have this one. OK, this one's the fancy one. So I'm actually going to use a different color here. Um, so I have 2y equals 5x minus 8y. And I don't like having eight, uh, the y's on both sides. So if I add 8y to both sides, I get 10y equals 5x using the addition property of equality. And if I divide both sides by 10, I get y equals 5x over 10, which can be re rewritten as 1 half x. So this is also a direct variation. This one here is also a yes. So I just can't look at it, and if it doesn't look like it's in this form, oh no, it's not a direct variation. If I can convert it using my properties of equality to be of this form, then indeed it is a direct variation. So if I look at this one, y equals 3x minus 4, um, there's no transformation that's going to make it look like y equals some number times x, because it has that minus 4. So this is a no. If you ever see a constant without a variable, that has been added or subtracted to both sides of an equation or is on a part of an equation at all, then it's not a direct variation. So if I look at this one, this one's not in the right format, but even if I changed it to the right, right format by taking and adding y to both sides, I get y plus 4 
and then I move the y over, I get 9x minus 4 equals y. And because of that minus 4, it's a constant. There's no variable attached to it. This one's also no. And then this thing right here, that's quadratic, so this is no. When we look at directly proportional relationships, we're looking at linear relationships, and that's not linear. Neither is this. This thing's an absolute value, so that's not a direct variation. And this thing, with the x and the exponent, that's an exponential, so not linear. So therefore, also not a direct variation. So the only ones that might be tricky are the linear ones that are written kind of fancy. Um, and notice the key is for these is that there's a constant term that's there that's messing the whole thing up. If you have that constant, no variable attached, then it's definitely not a direct variation. Graphically, directly proportional relationships are direct variations are super easy to spot. They have to be lines, first and foremost, so therefore they must be linear. And the second criteria is that they have to go through the origin. That's the only way for the points to, to set up in such a way so that, that the y value divided by the x value is always constant. So this thing here is not a direct variation because it's a line, yes, but it does not go through the origin. And it has to have both to be a directly proportional relationship. And this one here is indeed, yes, a directly proportional relationship. It's a direct variation because it is linear and it goes to the origin. It needs both. Going through the origin is not enough because you can have a parabola that goes to the origin and that's not a direct variation. Um, so with this one, um, I can actually find the equation once I know it's a direct variation because I know that uh, directly proportional relationships or direct variations have y over x is constant and it's that constant that's part of the equation, the number in the equation. So for this one, if I want to figure out what the constant is, I take one of the data points. Because it is a line, it goes to the origin. I don't have to verify its direct variation. So y is 3 on this point, and x is negative 2. And so therefore, my constant of variation is negative 3 halves. And if I confirm with this point the negative 3, 2, it is indeed negative 3 halves. And so then therefore, my equation is y equals negative 3 halves times x. Let's check to see if you understand the material presented in this lesson. So I'm going to have a series of questions that I want you to answer on your own and come to class next time with these answered. So the first set of questions um, is to determine if these sets of data, these relations, if they are indeed direct variations, if they are, and only if they are, find the constant of variation and then write the equation for these relations. So you get a set of ordered pairs and then you get a table. So answer these questions for those two sets of data. Okay. Second question is I want you to assume that x and y are directly proportional and then I want you to find the value of x. Okay. Third question, I need you to tell me if the equation 4x plus 2y equals 7, if it is a direct variation or not and then give an explanation. And then the last question I want you to answer on your own is I'm telling you that a line contains the point 0, 0 12, negative 3, and negative 36, 9. And the question is, is it a direct variation?